You know, Jeff, when I think of Stockbridge, Massachusetts, I can't help but think of that iconic 1967 Arlo Guthrie song, Alice's Restaurant Massacre. Yeah. Which, of course, is set right here in Stockbridge. That's a classic song for sure. Radio stations still play it every Thanksgiving. Yeah, so why are we here at Stockbridge Cemetery? <laughs> well, Arlo Guthrie's song made me think of Thanksgiving. And Thanksgiving makes me think of pie. Mm-hmm. And pie made me think of Stockbridge Cemetery. So we're here in Stockbridge Cemetery looking for pie. We are a Sedgwick pie. Ah. This pie is getting ready for the end of the world. Hey, I'm Jeff Belanger. Hey, and I'm Ray Hosher, and welcome to episode 59 of the New England Legends podcast. If you give us about 10 minutes, we'll give you something strange to talk about today. We are on a mission to chronicle every legend in New England, one week and one story at a time. And you can help us by sharing your own experiences and stories on our legend line. Call or text us anytime at 617-444-9683. And maybe we'll share one of your experiences in a future podcast. Now, if you don't already subscribe to our podcast, do it. Please. Right? It's free and it only takes a few seconds. We don't want you to miss a single episode of this show. It's awesome. Uh, you, <laughs> if I don't say so wow, myself. that's yeah, very, right? very objective of you. <laughs> you can also subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, or wherever you get your podcasts. And we appreciate it if you would post a review of us online. That we, helps a, a whole lot. And we love reading those, too. You know, Jeff, I can honestly say that I've never gone to a cemetery in search of pie before. So what is Cedric Pie? The Cedric Pie is a unique configuration of graves here in Stockbridge Cemetery. We'll have to search around a bit to find it. All right, in most cemeteries, the bodies and their corresponding headstones are laid to rest facing east. Right. Uh, It's pretty common in Judeo-Christian burials. Right. But the practice predates those religions by millennia. The idea was the body should face the rising sun, which signifies the resurrection and rebirth. There are also practical reasons for this east-west orientation as well. If a headstone faces north, for example, it's going to weather more quickly, which can fade the engravings. Mm. Or moss could grow on the north-facing stones and obscure the words. In modern cemeteries, this rule isn't strictly followed anymore. No. But the Stockbridge Cemetery isn't exactly modern. No, it's not. There's headstones here that date back to the early 1700s. The graves we're looking for aren't going to follow this convention, and that's why it stands out. But the legend behind the configuration is where things get weird. Hey, check this one out. It says Rockwell. Do you think that's... Uh, The guy from the (laughs) 1980s who did the song, Somebody's Watching Me? No, no, no. He's not dead. Oh. And they don't put up headstones for dead careers either. Ouch. Yeah. Dude, that's Norman Rockwell's grave. Oh, of course. Norman Rockwell, the famous painter of Saturday Evening Post fame, among many other accomplishments, he lived the last 25 years of his life right here in Stockbridge. You can see some visitors have left paintbrushes on the top of the grave. That's cool. Yeah, very cool. He died in uh, 1978. And that is a cool offering. I love the paintbrushes, but I think we should keep moving. Okay, right over there. I think we found what we're looking for. It's the resting place of the Cedric family. Okay, that is different. In the middle is a round stone circle that almost looks like a patio. Yeah. In the middle of that are two stone monuments. One is an obelisk, maybe 12 feet tall or so. And next to it is a shorter monument with a stone urn on the top. But all around the round stone patio, maybe eight or ten feet away, is a circle of various headstones all facing the center of the circle. Right. And then another circle beyond that and another and another. I'd say about five rings and over 100 graves in total between all the rings. This is the Cedric Pie. Now, how did this happen? Well, the center obelisk is a monument to Theodore Cedric, who lived from 1746 to 1813. And this guy has quite a resume. All right. What did he do? He was a U.S. representative and a U.S. senator from Massachusetts. He was a personal friend to George Washington, and he served as the fourth Speaker of the House. In 1802, he was appointed to the Massachusetts Supreme Judicial Court, where he served for the rest of his life. The stone next to Theodore, the stone urn, is his wife, Pamela Dwight Sedgwick, who was the mother of all of his seven children. Yeah, and get closer. Check out her epitaph. All right. It reads, She long endured and with patience supported unparalleled sufferings. A bright example of Christian patience and resignation. She was 54 years old when she died. Whoa. 
There's a story there, I'm sure. Yeah, clearly she was a martyr of her husband's political career. Mm. He was the center of the universe, or at the very least this family, and judging by this configuration of graves, he still is. But it's his afterlife that interests us the most. I can understand how such a prominent political figure would have a big monument in a cemetery like this. Sure, yeah. But how did Sedgwick Pie happen? This is a private family plot that's now attached to the Stockbridge Cemetery. At first, it was just their seven children who were buried around them, all aligned in a semicircle at the feet of their parents. It doesn't take much to start a trend, does it? (laughs) No, it doesn't. And then the children of Theodore and Pamela Sedgwick had children of their own, and those kids are buried behind their parents. And eventually, generations of Sedgwicks are making this circle their final resting place. But it's not just family. There's spouses, Mm -hmm. in-laws, servants of some of the families. I mean, even pets are buried here. (laughs) That is amazing. (laughs) So the 1990s is the most recent burial that we found in the pie. In all, there are six generations of Sedgwicks buried in this area. And the only rule for burial seems to be that you're either a direct descendant of Theodore and Pamela Sedgwick, a close relative of a direct descendant, or offered a plot from a direct descendant. There have been several famous direct descendants of this pair, by the way. There were distinguished military officers like Brigadier General William R. Bond, who's buried here. Okay. There's Edith Sedgwick better known as Edie, who was an American actress and fashion model. Okay. Uh, She was best known for being one of Andy Warhol's superstars, though groupie is the term (laughs) that's been used to describe her. Oh, okay. She died in 1971 from a drug overdose. She's not buried here, but could have been. Okay. And then there's the most famous living descendant, Kara Sedgwick. The actor and producer, Kara Sedgwick? That one. Married to Kevin Bacon, Kara Sedgwick? The very same. Huh. Kara is the great, 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 great granddaughter of Theodore Sedgwick, which means if she wants, she could be buried here when she passes away. That's quite the lineage represented in this circle of graves, but the whole thing seems a little incestuous to me. What do you mean? When you grow up and leave the home of your parents, you're supposed to start your own life, have your own home, your Mm. own family, make your own way through the world. I get that. Imagine if you just married into the Sedgwick family, Ray. Okay. Okay. The very existence of the Cedric Pie sends you a message that the Cedric side of the family is more important than your side of the family. And if your wife expects to be buried here in the pie, maybe she'll never really leave the shadow of her parents. Mm. I mean, you're not just marrying a person. You're signing on to live in the shadow of her entire family. That's a good point. So you're saying maybe I should call <laughs> off the wedding? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe. And, and it's not much different if you're a woman marrying into the Cedric family either. I mean, this pie sends a similar message. I can see that. I talk about a mama's boy, am I right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I still don't understand the meaning behind the pattern here. Okay, the legend as to why the graves are configured this way goes back many years. But we know the story made it into print in Edie Sedgwick's 1982 biography by Gene Stein called Edie, American Girl. The mystery is addressed on page one in the very first paragraph. Here, take a look. Okay, it reads, Have you ever seen the old graveyard up there in Stockbridge? In one corner is the family's burial place. It's called the Sedgwick Pie. In the center is Judge Theodore Sedgwick, and his wife Pamela is beside him. They are like the king and queen on a chessboard, and all around them, like a pie, are more modest stones, put in layers, back and round in a circle. The descendants of Judge Sedgwick, from generation unto generation, all buried with their heads facing out and their feet pointing in toward their ancestor. Okay, now here's the good part. Okay, it says, The legend is that on Judgment Day, when they arise and face the judge, they will have to see no one but Sedgwick's. Whoa, that's kind of awesome, and also (laughs) kind of elitist at the same time. (laughs) I think another takeaway from this legend is that if you want people to talk about you long after you're gone, do something really weird with your grave. (laughs) Right. You can see photos of the Sedgwick Pie on our website. Just go to OurNewEnglandLegends.com and click on episode 59. We'd also love your support as one of our patrons. Go to Patreon.com slash NewEnglandLegends, and for as little as three bucks per month, You can get early access to new episodes, plus bonus podcasts that no one else gets to hear but our patrons. Help us grow this movement. Please. Yeah, we appreciate everyone that's done it so far. We do. Also, don't miss seeing me on my fall story tour. Oh. I'm somewhere in New England almost every single night sharing ghostly tales and strange legends. Check out our website for places and dates. Our theme music is by John Judd. And speaking of John Judd, he has a new music album out. He does? Yeah, it's called Retro Sessions, and you can buy it on iTunes. We'll have a link on our website as well. 
Until next time, remember, the bizarre is closer than you think. Bye.